All right, we're here to talk about torque and statics. So the two important things about torque to remember is that torque is equal to the force times the radius at which it was applied. And there's a nuance to this, which we will explain in the first problem. The sum of torque, similar to sum of forces, is equal to the moments of inertia times the angular acceleration, similar to sum of forces being mass times acceleration. Uh, keep that in mind because there are there are countless similarities between sum of forces and sum of torques. So let's talk about this first problem here. We're trying to solve for the angular acceleration. So we have a we have this rod that is suspended on a um, we have this rod that is suspended on a wall and and vertically would be down this way where there is a, an acting force of 10 newtons at an angle 60 degrees going backwards like that um, and we want to know the angular acceleration because it's fixed to the wall at this point um, and then of course this thing because it has a mass also has a weight um, now one thing to note really quick is that I just looked this up and then I forgot it. Hold on. Um, okay, so I I forgot it. I'm gonna write it down really quick. I is equal to one third m l squared uh, because you're not supposed to be able to memorize that. So here we go. Now everything's good up there. Good. Cool. Okay. Now we can use this to solve for everything else. I want a different colored pen because I want a different colored pen. I'm gonna grab purple. Okay. So now that we know this, let's try to solve for this angular acceleration. Well, first let's label all of the forces that we know. There's a force being applied here and there's a force being applied here. That's the one you have to remember is that there's a weight that's being applied on this thing. And keep in mind that weight always acts, gravity always acts on the center of mass, meaning that assuming that this is an evenly, like a weight evenly distributed um, rod, which I'm going to say it is, means that this acts at one half the length. So it will act at one meter. It's important to know that. So we know that sum of torques, we can do sum of torques for this, sum of torques, is equal to IA, which is also equal to all the different forces times their radii, but torque only acts perpendicularly to the radius from this point at where it's being applied. So for example, if you have a circle and you have a force that's being applied here at this angle theta to, to the perpendicular, assuming that this little dotted line is perpendicular to the radius, um, this being your radius, this being your force. The only part of this force that matters for the torque is this perpendicular part here that will be applied there. That's the only part that matters. Um, it's the only part that will generate spin. If you think about it, when you try to throw a Frisbee and you flick it with your wrist, and you flick that Frisbee with your wrist, you're applying the flick at that angle along the edge of the disc that will get it to spin as well as pushing it outwards in order to get it to have um, velocity that goes straight out tangential velocity so a quick delineation is that if you have a force that goes straight through the center it will not cause torque it will only cause um, translational motion but if you have a force that instead moves at any angle to the center um, so that it's not acting at the center, it, you can split this up into a torque and an actual force where you have a force that applies straight through the center at this point here, and then you have a torque here that applies at, an, at perpendicularly, depending on the angle at which it's being applied to. And that's the key to understanding this because now that we know that, we know that only, only this part here matters for torque. Um, this part here being 30 degrees, this here being 60 degrees. Um, and then there's also a force being applied here. But the thing is, it's fixed to the wall, which means there will be a normal force here 
that will cancer there that will cancel out this force here so then we won't have to deal with it um and it's just a quick note that that normal force is there because sometimes they will ask about stuff that's there so i times acceleration which is equal to force times radius so first of all we're only dealing with the forces that will be perpendicular to the radius so perpendicular to the rod so we have a weight here that goes down let's set a positive and negative really quick i'm going to set our negative down um and first of all i'm going to set it as a rotation i'm going to set our positive down negative up because this thing we can tell it's going to rotate downwards um, because a force of 10 newtons is not enough to counteract a force of what would be 40 newtons if it were just weight um, or at least it shouldn't be so we'll see um, I times acceleration is equal to the weight, so the force of gravity. Um, force of gravity times the radius at which it, how far it's being applied from the pivot point, which the whole length is two. It acts at the center of mass, so halfway between the length. So two divided by two, which is one. I'm going to just leave that there though for our own reference. I'm going to go L divided by two. Um, L divided by two plus it actually be minus because it's going the opposite direction it's going towards the negative um our torque along that line there so we have our force and then it would be cosine 30 degrees or it'd be sine 60 degrees um since those two values are equivalent so now we can substitute all in all known and or all known values and start to get things equal to values we need one half ml squared is equal to uh also, also i completely forgot this has to be two or this has to be all of l because torque is force times radius um i can't forget that literally teaching the subject and that's the most important part about torque so force of gravity which would be mg l divided by two minus um MGL divided by two minus force, uh, force times length times cosine 30 degrees. And now we can substitute all known values and solve for angular acceleration, which I forgot to write down. So one third, four, two squared. Angular acceleration is equal to the mass four times gravity 10 times the length two meters divided by two minus the force 10 times the length two times cosine of 30 degrees. Cosine of 30 degrees is rad three over two. So now we can solve for angular acceleration based on all of this info. So graphing calculator time, we go four, 10, two, uh, all over 2 minus 10 to rad 3 over 2, not over 3, over 2, is equal to that number divided by 1 th one third times 4 times 4 is equal to 4.25. 4.25. Radians per second squared. Quick note: We can actually convert this to just normal acceleration by by multiplying this by the length of the entire object, so two. Therefore, the, the actual acceleration here would be eight point five meters per second squared. So there we go. That's our solution for this one. So a is equal to or alpha is equal to 4.25 radians per second squared. Okay, now we can erase this. Okay, now we have this scale, this balance scale here. I'm gonna move this over here. We have this balance scale here um, where we have one block over here, one block over here. The entire length is four meters. The mass of it is four kilograms. And we're looking for the mass of the left, the left box in order for this balance to balance. So we are trying to figure out based on our sum of torques again. So sum of torque is equal to IA, which 
because we're trying to have it balanced, we actually want there to be zero angular acceleration. So sum of torques is equal to zero. So let's set a positive and negative direction. Let's say that this direction is positive and this direction is negative. It really doesn't matter because everything is equal to zero and we want there to be no motion anyways, but it's just to categorize what's positive and negative. So we're going to have our mystery mass times the weight that it's there. So mass times gravity times the length at which it's being applied. If the entire thing is four and it's one over from the pivot point, the length that it's there is L divided by four. Because this L here, this radius, is the distance from the pivot point. And that's really the that's really what, what's key about that. So and then we would also now have minus the weight of this box. We would have mass mass of given. So mass of I'm just gonna put M2. Um M2 times gravity times it's one, two over. So L divided by two. Um, and now this is something that gets often forgotten that you need to remember is that because this entire thing has weight and because it's not pivoting from the center of the mass of the whole thing, then there is also a weight being applied here. And that would also cause more torque. So we're going to have M of the balance times gravity times L divided by four since it's one one little segment over from the middle. So now we can solve for everything now that we have all of these given values. So let's add all the negatives over. We have M2, two times 10 times four divided by two plus four times gravity, so 10 times 2 divided by 4 is equal to this value here, our mystery mass, times gravity, times length divided by 4. Okay. Also, um, what happened with this one? This should be 4 divided by 4. There we go. I don't know why I put a 2 there. So now we can solve for that mass. So we go two times 10 times two plus four times 10 and then times four divided by four is equal to 80 divided by 10 times four divided by four. That's one. So just divided by 10 is equal to eight. So that means this mystery mass box has to be equal to eight kilograms. So that means this is eight kilograms. This box here is eight kilograms. There we go. All right, now the third problem. It's telling us it wants to have us derive for linear acceleration of the entire system with a non-ideal pulley. This pulley says it has no friction because it doesn't tell you that there's friction, but then also tells you that it does have a mass. So. That's a little annoying because normally this problem would be quite easy, but it's not. So with this, in order to solve for angular accel or linear acceleration, we need to sum both the, the forces on this entire system and the torques on this entire system. Plug the things back in and then solve for the total final equation. So we need first to figure out everything that's going on with this with this system. So we have a tension force that pulls down on this thing here, a tension force that pulls up on this thing here, both of those being equal to one another. We have a weight of the box here. We have a weight of the pulley that applies on the center of mass, and we have a normal force on the pulley that applies in the center of mass where these two are equal, these two are equal. Okay. Now, using this, we can then sum our forces and sum our torques. So sum of forces is equal to MA. So I'm going to just put this colon here. MA, which is equal to on just this box, because this is the only thing where forces may differ, because these two here will cancel out. We have, we're going to set this direction positive and negative, and then over here, this direction, positive and negative, because those are the actual directions they'd be moving. 
So MA, which would mean that this is equal to MG, our force times gravity, minus our tension force. So with this being said, we can then solve for the tension here, which I'll, I'll show you why we're doing this in two seconds. Force, so tension is equal to uh, mass times gravity minus mass times acceleration. Okay, and then now let's sum our torques. Sum of torque, colon, is equal to I times angular acceleration, uh, which is equal to all the forces on the pulley that do torque, the only one being our tension force, which applies at a radius R perpendicular to the perpendicular to the radius, which is perfect. Uh, so that means we don't have to do any cosine, sine nonsense that we had to do with this one. So with that being said, we can now plug in this force or this torque, uh, not torque, we can plug in this tension force here. Uh, we say IA, I is one half m r squared times angular acceleration. Angular acceleration is acceleration over radius is equal to our force of tension divided by, less, if we divide this radius over, we can have r squared and r squared, which will both cancel out. Uh, we divide that radius over. We say that this is then equal to mg minus ma. And then this m r squared, this whole thing here would be mg over ma. So now, because I just, these I meant to have be capital M, because I have them capital M in the top. So now we need to solve for this A. We have one half M A is equal to M G minus A, but we need to get that A out of there. So I'm going to add this A to the other side, B plus, not B, just like it, it will be plus M A is equal to M G. So then we can, reverse substitute this a out to one half m plus big m is equal to mg a is equal to mg over one half little m plus big m and that is our final actual acceleration for it there we go Whew. we have done torque and statics